Hi, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And today we are going to follow up on Rick's uh, Party Guile brew method that we posted a few episodes ago and taste uh, one of the beers from that experience. Um, so tell us a little bit about this beer. So you may recall, and if you don't, we'll put the notes in the, in the bottom there for you to follow through. We did a Party Guile beer, which is two beers uh, with one grain bill. So we did one beer with the first runnings, we did the second beer with the second runnings, and today we're going to be testing the second beer first. Mm -hmm. The first beer we just racked, and that's going to be kegged, uh, but a couple of weeks ago Sarah and I uh, bottled this beer. This is the Belgian Pale Ale, as we're calling it, to well with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to be tasting that beer today to find out whether or not it's going to meet the standards uh, being served at our annual Boxing Day party, which is now just four days away. So mm -hmm. now is the test taste test, and we're going to find out whether or not it's going to make it to the table. Yeah. And um, this will air actually on Christmas Day. Um, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas, the 26th. We always have a big dinner party. Um, and so Rick likes to brew a couple of special beers. We'll be pouring our spiced porter our solstice porter for that day, for sure. That's been aging very nicely. Yeah, we'll put a link to that as well. We did mm -hmm. talk about that when we first tasted it, and it's aged quite well. But today, it is all about the Belgian pale ale. Mm -hmm. So just a brief synopsis of what we did. Uh, so there were two runnings, pretty much identical, except half about half the hops in the second beer, the one we're tasting, than there were in the first beer. And in the second beer, we're using a Belgian Trappist yeast, mm -hmm. which is going to give it some more fruitiness in addition to what we're going to be getting from the hops that we're going to be trying. Uh, you might recall we're using Huel Melon, which has kind of hints of strawberry and melon. And I thought that that might pair very well with the Belgian uh, Trappist yeast. We're going to find out. Mm -hmm. And... We didn't put any labels on these just yet, so this is just a reminder. It's always a good idea uh, so we don't have mystery beers. I mean, there's something fun to be said about finding something at the back of the refrigerator and going, well, what's this? Let's find know. out. And it's, maybe <laughs> It's light. I can see through it. Yes, what exactly. Is it? But, yeah. You get a little you... haze right now just from because I took it out a couple of minutes earlier. Uh, but you can see, considering I used a little bit of dry malt extract, I'm um, pleased that it came out a little paler than usual, although that was about a pound for uh, uh, of the entire five-gallon batch, so it shouldn't mm -hmm. be too dark. Yeah. Anyway. So crack it. Let's have it. Oh, and we got the, the telltale sound, so we know it's carbonated. Nice. Got a little gas coming out. And we'll be serving that in the, uh, the Gage Hill Crafts glasses that uh, Sarah bought for me a couple of years back. Yeah, we live on Gage Hill, so uh, I thought that was appropriate for that. Well, that's still the name of the brewery to date, so we'll the find out. Name. There's one for right. you, dear. So, yeah, so Rick was saying a little, maybe a little darker than the average uh, Belgian ale, but still a very nice color. Let's give you a little very bit more inviting. of the bubbles there. All right, bubble me up. Yeah. Mmm, nice and fizzy. So, not bad All head. Right. Again, this is probably three weeks in, which would normally be about when I'd start serving. Mm, I can definitely smell that yeast. Ooh. So cheers, babe. Yeah, it's got a little bit of the banana esters that I know you're not usually a fan of, but um, it's we'll still see. quite fruity. Yeah, mm. the yeast is very pronounced. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of still banana, mm -hmm. a lot of fruit. But and you're right, this isn't my favorite yeast, but but it's a nice beer, nice and effervescent. Yeah, exactly. And that goes well with one of the things we were talking about earlier today before we uh, started sh shooting this video is that um, if you're going to have heavy foods at any of your holiday mm -hmm. celebrations, things with gravy, heavy meats, uh, greasy items, whether they're potatoes or something else, a nice effervescent bubbly beer goes pretty well with that. Even though it may not be your normal seasonal type of thing, a saison which is more of a summer beer, has lots of little tiny bubbles, and that helps kind of break through the heaviness of mm -hmm. meats and gravies. Yeah, yep. Anything with a lot, of, I always cook with a lot of butter around the holidays, so yeah, any of that sure. stuff is it's good. That's nice. And I'm starting, now that it's had a moment to breathe a little bit, mm -hmm. that ester is kind of uh, bubbling away. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more of the other fruit notes. Yeah, I am too. It's very... And a little bit of a spice, which might also be 
Would that be the east or that's the still hops? The, that's still going to be the east. I believe yeah. that the Trappist, you're going to get a little bit of almost a peppery spice to mm-hmm. very but faint. Mm-hmm. I'm pleased. But again, an- another nice cleansing element mm-hmm. when you're talking about a beer to have with uh, sort of heavy food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, what do you what do you think? I'm pleased. I'm actually found it a little more. I was concerned when we were when we were racking it to be uh, in order to uh, bottle it that it might be a little too banana, a little too mm-hmm. you know. But I'm that's toned down a little bit since we were racking it because we usually yeah. taste when we're transferring beer from one container to another or getting ready to bottle. Well, well, you you need to pull a sample for to see if you hit your uh, gravity. Yeah. And exactly. for the alcohol content, so we can estimate that. But also, we just like to taste it, and it's, it's you know, it's it's pretty much finished at that point. But the the lack of carbonation really does affect the flavor too. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Exactly, as Sarah likes to say, there's times she goes, "Well, I, when I like it when it's flat, then I'm going to love it when it's carbonated." Mm-hmm. And this is no exception. Um, mm. This I think will be served. Um, I like it a great deal. I probably wish I'd brewed it a little bit more so that yeah. it's ready for the spring and summer. But <clears throat> there's something festive about some of those, uh, like you said, the spices that are coming through. Mm-hmm. Have some, some festiveness to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the banana's not overwhelmingly cloying or, or overwhelmingly banana-y. Right. Um, some people really go for that, you know, uh, est- ester compound or, or banana flavor. Right. Um, Allagash is one brewery that is very Belgian styled and most of their beers have that um, and I, I tend to like it better on a dark beer than I do on a lighter beer yeah I was just about to say I know as far as the Allagash you like the Allagash black mm-hmm. you're less likely to like the wit um, so yeah and it's hit or miss for me too and as much as Sarah and I both like bananas but she's not a fan of anything that's banana flavored even if it's naturally banana flavored mm-hmm. um, there's something off-putting about that I, again I'm quite pleased I'm ple- yeah. I want to say I'm pleasantly surprised I wasn't sure what to do it was the first time that or expect it's the first time we tried this uh, this two runnings uh, it's not the first time but it was the, uh, it's one that I, I spent a little bit more time crafting the the recipes for mm-hmm. um, and Sarah mentioned something I want to get back to she said something about getting taking samples and so I know what my gravity levels are so you know how much your alcohol is this is something I want to repeat frequently is that we I am not a brewer I'm a home brewer I'm a basics brewer I'm trying to demystify things I want you to not be afraid do not get bogged down of whether or not you've hit your gravity follow your recipes keep things clean and you're gonna get a good beer don't mm-hmm. get bogged down into science yeah. and the main thing is is uh, as Rick just said sanitation so beyond that you know just enjoy your beer and make tweaks as you go along to your recipes to uh, to tune them into your own uh, taste that you enjoy so Cheers Cheers. again. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back hopefully next week. That kegged beer will be uh, ready to sample. So we'll taste the first beer second and uh, let you know how that turned out. Cheers. Cheers.